Hey, what's up guys? Matt with The Movement System. Today we're gonna to talk about the force velocity curve. We're gonna talk about different points on the force velocity curve and the training adaptations associated with those and how we can make training decisions with our athletes. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so when we're thinking about the force velocity curve, this is basically showing that there's an inverse relationship between moving really fast and moving a lot of resistance or really high force. So if we think about something like sprinting, that's gonna be really low resistance. I mean, there's no external load on you if you wanna move as fast as possible. So that would be the very bottom, the speed portion of the force velocity curve. On the entire other end of the spectrum would be something like a power lifter doing a one rep max, and that would be the most forceful, but at the slowest velocity. Because if you really load up to a true one rep max, you're gonna move very slowly, low velocity. And there's all kinds of training in between. So that's what we're gonna get into next. So starting at maximal strength, we have something like a one rep max bench or a one rep max squat, uh, potentially a two or a three rep max, but typically we're gonna be above 90% one rep max in the max strength portion of this. So that max strength phase is often also associated with max effort, those high effort, slow grinding type reps. If we start to get lower than 90% one rep max, we're gonna be moving the bar fast enough that we're gonna start moving into that, that next zone, the strength speed zone. And really important, strength speed is different than speed strength. So strength speed with strength first means it's gonna be a little bit slower, uh, whereas speed strength will be a little bit faster, which we're gonna talk about in a second. For this strength speed zone, this is something more like a four, five, or a six rep max type of a load. You might see a box squat with 80% one rep max on it. That type of training would be considered strength speed. Moving on to power, power can be defined as anything from 30 to potentially 80, 85% one rep max, uh, but with a little bit more force and speed. So this is something that's not super fast, like sprinting or box jumps, but it's also something that's not uh, super slow, like a grinding rep. So a lot of times Olympic lifting fits right in the middle of that power zone, uh, potentially something like a loaded jump squat could fit there as well. So moving on to speed strength, this is more of our dynamic effort portion of the force velocity curve. Uh, this is where you're gonna see something like eight sets of three with 50% load, and then really focusing on moving the bar quickly, whether that be a squat, a bench, uh, you know, something like that. So again, this is explosive strength, and this is the speed strength focused portion of the force velocity curve. And then lastly, we have speed. And speed is anything that's done at max velocity with really low resistance. So this could be something like jumping, cutting, throwing, sprinting, all of those types of activities that are really fast and low force are gonna be in the speed section of this force velocity curve. Okay, so now how do we think about this in relation to actually making training decisions? Well, importantly, we wanna program so that athletes are moving from general training off season to more and more sport specific training as they approach their competition or their season. That's the overarching principle here. So off season, even if an athlete's actual position, say they're a power lifter and they are all the way up on the max strength portion of the force velocity curve, off season, they might be doing hypertrophy work, dynamic effort work, uh, something that's at an entirely different portion of the force velocity curve to drive some different adaptations. But then as they move closer to the season, that's when they would typically shift their programming to emphasize more sport specific portions of that force velocity curve. They would get closer to doing you know, singles, doubles, and triples at close to competition weights. So some other things to note is that max effort training is typically very low volume, and some of the training adaptations that you would associate with that are things like improved neural drive, motor unit recruitment, and type two muscle fiber hypertrophy. And then some training adaptations that are more associated with the opposite side of the curve, like such as speed work, could be things like intra and intermuscular synchronization, rate coding, or rate of force development. So the overall principle here is that training at the max effort portion of the force velocity curve will kind of shift that portion of the curve to the right. If you train the speed portion of the force velocity curve, it will kind of shift that up. We can shift the whole curve, but training adaptations are really specific, and specifically training adaptations from the speed portion of the curve are pretty transient and don't last a super long time unless they're continually trained. So we have to make specific decisions with programming of when we're gonna actually target that max effort portion of the curve versus when we're gonna actually target the speed portion of the curve. 
All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If you are studying for the CSCS exam and you want to learn more from videos like this, you can check out my strength conditioning study course. It has videos going over tons of topics from endocrine to training adaptations to energy systems to program design. Uh, it covers all of those topics with videos and quizzes. If you want to learn more about that, go ahead and click the link in the description below. Make sure you subscribe and smash that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.